back. Welcome back, babies. It's your girl, AJ, the owner of AJ Need Creations. Baby, huh? Nee, what's good? What's good? So today we will be making a double layer satin and bonnet. Are you guys ready to actually learn how to make one? Somebody comment down below on my video last, like my last video was saying that they want to learn how to make satin bonnets. So we will be doing a step by step on how to make satin bonnets. Now, if you are interested on just wondering like my sizes or just wondering where do I get my satin for or like my elastic band, what is the size that you use? Make sure you guys are checking out my Patreon and my membership on YouTube so that way you are getting my sizes i'm telling you my size that i'm using i'm telling you everything you are really getting the these and the secrets that i don't tell everybody okay don't tell everybody else but check it out if you are interested in those things now we will be doing a double layer satin bunny so we'll be using two colors a royal blue for both sides to cut money the same thing on both sides that's what we'll be doing we actually will be doing an adult large satin bunny now i had an order so that one i'm gonna like let me just go ahead and record for you guys because i got an order anyway it's not like i'm just making it up out the blue i could go ahead and record it for you guys so i'm gonna be showing you guys the fabric that i'll be using i'm using oh i'm gonna say where is it I would be using this were you blue satin fabric right here i did get this from hobby lobby i got it during a sale so it was like four dollars or like three dollars a yard so i always kind of stack up when they have their little sales i go and just get some fabric definitely colors that i know that i always use now if you are interested in a satin money custom satin money check out my website so that way you are able to get one that's already made if you don't feel like making one but if you would like to learn how to make one then this video is for you i'm teaching you how to make one it takes about 10 minutes the more you do it the more faster it goes it could take you actually five minutes three minutes you're gonna be na 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 play some music and you just sewing okay i would actually be using my singer heavy duty sewing machine i love that machine whenever i'm using something like satin bunnies or something like that or even doing trenches i like to actually use my domestic machine because i need to use my zigzag stitches i do not use my vivo or i don't use my juki i use my regular regular domestic sewing machine just because of that so we'll be doing this on a regular domestic sewing machine no surgeon no nothing we're going to be doing it just on a regular sewing machine. Now, if you don't even have the heavy duty machine, you could do this on any sewing machine. All you need is a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch. You only need a zigzag stitch. You just need a straight stitch and you could do this. Okay, get some satin. Let's go ahead and let's sew a bunny today. You are going to learn how to sew a bunny. Stand on business 2024. We are about business. Let's go ahead and go. So we have our fabric right here. I'm doing this adult large. The adult large is my own measurements myself. Like it's something that I came up with. So this is just particular to me. If you are wondering what measurements I use for my adult large or my bonnet. So you could check out my Patreon because I do have it in there. So we're going to cut out the fabric. This is two pieces of satin. So double layer. Alright, boom, we're done. Now let's go ahead and sew. Alright, you guys. So I'm using my singer heavy duty 44S. I have two of these. This is like my favorite regular domestic sewing machine for at home. I use this because at the end I do zigzag my elastic band. So we have two satins right here, blue on blue. You want to do right sides together. So right sides together and the right sides are the shiny sides. You have a shiny side to your set and then like a little dull side. So you're going to do right sides together. Mostly always for sewing right sides together, honestly, that's really the truth. So this is the shiny side and then you see it's like a little bit dull, shiny. So shiny sides together is another way to remember if you look like, okay, what's well right sides still? Shiny sides together, line it up very good. You could do pins or clip it together. I'm so used to just doing it like this. That's how I got used to it because I have done it so many times. Alrighty. Make sure everything is lined up. How I like it to be. I usually cut like my second piece of 
fat and a little bit bigger that's something i got used to doing it because at the end i do like to trim it so that's just something i just really got so used to doing i would like just cut it a little bit bigger okay everything looks good now it's time to sew let's go ahead bring it down I'm going to use about probably like a 1 8 1 8 seam like for your stitch so usually that's right here on your machine I'm using about a 1 8 for this bun you could do like a 1 8 you could also do like a 1 4 just depending now, I do have my new all the way to the right I'm doing my tension at 3 my width is at 3 my length is at 3 and I'm doing a straight stitch all the way around we're using 100% cotton all-purpose thread that we got from Joann's you always want to start back stitching that's how you do your first couple stitch back stitch I usually backstitch through my whole entire process. That's just something I'm used to. And we're gonna sew this like I regularly do. We just gonna go all the way around. We will leave about one inch opening. So this is the start. When I come back around, we use leave a one inch opening to flip my whole entire fabric inside out. Sorry if I go fast. <laughs> this is how I'm used to sewing it. Like I said, I do a backstitch in between just to make sure everything is secure. I do backstitch while I'm sewing. That's just something I do. And I recommend telling people to do it just because it just secures everything. Definitely your stitches. You just never know. You never know if you forgot to do a backstitch. So why not just backstitch in between? My backstitch is right here. Say reverse. All I do is go down and let it up and then backstitch back stitch it go front and back and that's all it literally go over the stitch that it just did and i'm using satin so like i told you guys we're doing tension at three and we're also doing the width at three i do everything at the same amount so if i change it to four i'm gonna change everything to four that's just something i like to have it even <laughs> And if you also wondering, I am using a 75 by 11 needle on this machine. This is a domestic machine. I buy singer, um, singer needles. I buy them off Amazon, Walmart. And I just stack up on them. I'm also using a J foot on my machine. If you just curious. So we coming back around and like I told you guys, we're gonna leave an opening because we're gonna flip it inside out. So, depending on how big your hand is, leave an opening for your hand. <laughs> but most hands is a little bit big. I'm gonna grab my little scissors. I use these just to be able to clip what I need. As you can see, I got these from Walmart. I got these like a while ago. I have no idea what's going on with my focus, but it's, it's not going right. Got these from Walmart. They are locked, so I undo them like this. So we're just going to go ahead and cut it. When I do that, I usually go ahead and pull out some thread just because when I start at someone, I don't want it to jam up. All right, so we have just like a couple bits of extra fabric, and I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Just like these pieces are extra fabric, so I'm going to go ahead and like cut around it because they're extra that I don't want. And let's talk about the stitch. To, first off, this is why I use like using the same color when it comes down to the thread. Do you see the stitch? Oh, the stitch. The stitch, honey. That stitch is everything. Okay. Let's go ahead and trim it up. I do have my scissors right here. And I just do that because when you top stitch and you make your casing for your elastic, you don't want this to be there because it will mess it up. It will like literally get stuck in there. And believe me, I have did that <laughs> plenty of times. Don't follow me. So I'm going to like zoom in. Well, I'm going to zoom you guys out. See, I can see what I'm doing. Not zoom in. And I'm just going to go around. I'm not going to do everything. Make sure you're not cutting your stitch. Please don't cut your thread that you just stitched. Do not cut it. 
you could go as near as you can if you don't trust yourself leave a little bit i'm usually just doing extra now the part that we left open i'm not gonna cut that because i'm gonna need that at the end to close it and that part is what gets people because sometimes they cut it and you need that at the end to close it so don't cut the part that's going to be the case in the clothes all right i actually want to try my hand on the um the ruffle bunny i'm gonna try my hand at one of those i've been seeing them and i haven't tried it yet but i'm gonna try them probably try that sometime next week Next week is like a mini, just me week of sewing. It feels so good to sew. I haven't sewed like December. I was sewing orders, but it's just like me just sewing. I wasn't doing and it sucks, okay? Just sewing and not doing what you want sometimes. It, it sucks. But as a business, it's like sometimes you have to just do something for fun be stingy sometimes because if you're just working on stuff back to back it do become a little bit boring and i tell people that like it's okay to take them days where you just do something for you it's not on your website or nothing you're doing this because this is your like you're doing something for yourself you're gonna show something for you now i'm doing this one on camera just because it's sewing and it's abundant and somebody did just ask me for like a bunnet video and i just love sewing why not bunnets are quick to make it's not like stressful or anything like that definitely after you learn your sizing all right so this is how it looks this is how it looks now we found the hole that you left because you left like a one inch hole remember you left a little one inch hole. Mine's is probably a half an inch because I always do that. And you're going to turn it. Okay. We're going to flip it. So now you're going to see a shiny side. That is your bonnet. So we're going to flip it inside out. I feel like I'd be saying it wrong. Is it right side out? Inside out? Inside out? Yeah, it's inside out because the satin is inside. <laughs> the shiny part is inside. So yes. But just in case you look like I still don't understand, we're going to do the shiny side out. So pull the shiny side out now. So let's go ahead. If you did a tight little hole like me, you may have it as a little bit tight. That's why I said if you it's your first time doing it, leave a good amount for your hand to reach through. Boom. Boom. And it's Monday. How is you guys Monday going so far? Mine's going good so far. My kids are driving me crazy, but if your kids don't drive you crazy, what are they doing? <laughs> like, your kids have to. I think that's their job is to drive us crazy, right? They have to. It's like, it's just, that's their only job is to drive us nuts. <laughs> like, if we don't do that, I bet they look alike. Then we didn't do our job as kids, did I? And I got two, a boy and a girl, so it's a lot. I got my dog outside. She just keep coming inside and she just keep barking for some reason. So as I'm pulling, I'm also looking just to make sure it's not an opening. Because sometimes you can miss it, but I thought that was an opening, but it's not. It's just the stitches, right? And I recommend definitely being very gentle sometimes because I have ripped like a little hole in it because I was pulling it so hard. I'm like, why is it not going? And I'm like, okay, if it doesn't go now, I just go back and I like open a hole a little bit more. But don't force it. If you force it, sometimes you may end up just like ripping a, hole, a new hole. Okay. You could take this time to be looking to make sure your stitches are closed and this bunnet is closed and it won't be opening like once you put it on somebody's head and stretch it out all right this last little part right here the flipping takes a little time now you can use the iron to iron your edges if you are new i definitely recommend using like an iron to press it i don't use one anymore i kind of do like a toss up where i'm going to toss it because i feel like sometimes with satin you can overheat it and you can burn it so for me i try to avoid it if i need to if it's cotton then that's something different like i would press the cotton side but it, usually no just because you never know satin is tricky you could use you know leave a bar mark on it definitely if this is your only satin for that customer 
then now you gotta wait till you go back to the store and you push somebody order out. All right, so for me, I do this a couple times and I will even go around and just press it out myself because I don't want to use the iron to heat this up and I leave like a bar mark on it. You never know, just to make sure this is the opening. Yep. And you could double check, make sure that's the opening. You will, if you need to go around and make sure you don't got no other holes, do that. But I see that is the opening. So I'm gonna actually like pull everything out just like this. Like you see, laying it flat. If you were to iron it, that's what you'll be doing. But for me, I'm not gonna iron it. Now, if you iron it, just use like a parchment paper or something. I try to avoid it, like I said, I'm be want to do that oh i got an idea that's what i'm gonna try making oh my gosh because i haven't seen one with satin i'm not gonna tell y'all because i be telling my ideas sometimes and then people go selling it people go selling it like it's crazy people just go stealing it i probably also make a membership on youtube also so that way if you're on youtube and you want to do a membership through there so that I think I'm going to do YouTube. And I'm sorry, you guys. I learned that I'd be smacking it. I never knew until I started YouTube. But I'm going to try doing a YouTube membership and also a Patreon. So that we could be on both things for you guys. All right. So this is the hole, right? Remember, we left the hole open. I'm going to zoom in for you guys so y'all can see. This is our hole. I want you to take the fabric out. Hold it. You do not want to sew this clothes. If you sew this clothes... Ooh, you're gonna hate it when you gotta go back and unstitch it or it's like wait you done did the whole bunny and it's like oh my god i gotta sit down and do this whole thing let's avoid it okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hold this piece so that way we holding it and we're not gonna stitch it now i'm gonna use elastic the elastic band i'm using for my bonnets i told you guys i get off amazon this is the band. This is about one and a half inch, as you see. So about a half inch band elastic, if you guys could see. It's focusing more on my own, <laughs> the name. Y'all, y'all see that? So this is my elastic band right here. And I already told you guys, if you are in my Patreon or in my membership, then you have the amount that I use okay so I use about one and a half so I'm gonna go ahead if you are new you'll go ahead and you want to leave that amount in there so I know okay that's enough space I usually know by now just because I know it off the top of my head but leave enough space so that way when you're sewing this piece okay all right so now that you know how much space you need go ahead put it to the side and make sure you leave that amount of space open and like I told you guys we always what backstitch so let's sew Backstitch. And for me, because I didn't iron it, I usually just hold it and make sure the seam is going to the side and it's poking out how I like it. Now, if I'm doing two different colors, sometimes I want it to overlap where I have like the bottom color come up some just because I want that to overlap a little bit. Now, you could take your time. You could go fast. It's up to you. I'm taking my time because I'm also holding the edges and I want the edges to be a certain way. Because I want that seam to poke out. Also make sure I got my enough space. So I'm looking in the back just to make sure it's enough space and I didn't go over. Now if it do happen, all I know is that I can't use my elastic pullers. So I have to use a safety pin. Still doing a straight stitch, nothing new. Everything is still the same. So we're gonna go all the way around and we're not gonna leave nothing open this time. We will be closing it. This is, we are basically making our casing for the elastic to get through. And that will give, you know, the circle part of the whole entire bunnet. What I want to try is making a ruffle one. I haven't did one yet, but I'm going to try one. So I'm going to teach myself how to make one. 
I don't think it's too much of a difference. I just think I have to make it like a different part of it. Or I think I have to close the on it. I don't know yet. We're going to play around and see because I haven't made one. Like I told y'all, I backstitched throughout my sewing just to make sure everything is secure. I backstitched. I still got my Lexus pullers in here. <laughs> All right, so we are actually almost done with this. Y'all got almost like a cramp in my feet. <laughs> oh, this is a question for the people that sew. Do you sew with shoes on or do you sew with your shoes off? Like, be honest because I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, I remember when I first got a sewing machine, I remember we returned it because I was like so clueless. I like pressed down and the machine was like, Brah! and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. And for me, it took me to learn how to sew with my shoes off. Like I had to put socks on and press down on the pedal because when I had shoes on, I would like press the gas. I would just like go like I'm driving or something. I'm like, oh my gosh, like it really takes time to learn. Like you have to practice how to press the gas. Now on my Juki, oh gosh, I'd be and I'd be looking like, oh my gosh, like, it takes time, even with the different machines, they all take time. So we are to the end, we closed it, boom, bang, pull it out. Now, versus the V-Vor, this right here actually has a cutter on the side, but I'm so used to just grabbing my little scissors because I have them right next to me. And I trim because I can get as close as I need to versus trying to cut that and then go back in and trim. I trim as I go, I don't wait, I trim. Now it's time to actually elastic the whole entire bunny. What I'm gonna do is actually turn my machine down. Ooh. My machine down is right here. Sexy, sexy it is. So we're gonna try to zoom you guys in so you can see. This is my machine down. So I am on black. If I were to be on blue, I would turn to S1 and that means I could do the blue stitches. I'm on black. So my dot up here is telling you which one I'm on. I'm doing a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna go to the second dial. I'm not worried about this blue because if I turn it to S1, that'd be blue, but I'm worried about black. So I'm keeping it on black, black, black. We on zigzags, okay? I do zigzags on my elastic to close it. It just makes sure it's on there very tight versus some people do not. I do zigzags. We have our elastic. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? to party all the time <laughs> boom for me i do both sides so one side i just have this way the elastic gonna go in now if you don't have a pin or elastic pull it then your elastic gonna go straight through so you could pin it to like the outside of the fabric or do like a big pin and do it so we're gonna go to the part that we left open remember we don't supposed to sew this you don't supposed to sew it we're going to go ahead and put our elastic puller. This is actually called elastic puller. You can get this from Hobby Lobby, Amazon. I believe I have a link down in my Amazon store. I don't remember. I will go and check. If I do, I'll like, post it down below my Amazon store link. All right. So I see this part did get too tight. So before I even finish, remember I told y'all, if you go over too much, then you can't use your elastic puller. That's okay. Let me see what we're going to use. Boom. I always keep like a safety pin in here just because of this. And also because of my kids. So I like keep one. And I may have lost it. Nope. It was all the way at the bottom. We're going to get our safety pin, okay? We got our safety pin right here. And what we're going to do is keep one elastic puller at the other end. And then um, put the elastic, not the elastic, safety pin on one end. And I use the elastic just because sometimes, like I said, you may go over a little bit. And that's okay. Don't get frustrated. Boom. Switch your tools. That's all. Switch the tool. Boom. Move that there. Last um, safety pin. Boom. Let's redo and let's pull it through. Safety tent pins does take a little bit longer. Y'all, it's like outside just pouring out. Safety pins take longer. That's why sometimes people don't like using them because it's just like more, more time. Like you go way slower with a safety pin versus the elastic puller. It's just going all the way through. They're like $5 too and it's coming with two in there. 
but this is the process of me pulling it through and once we do this then we'll just be closing up the um the opening and then that's it so in total if you not recording like me <laughs> not recording like me and you pre-cut or even if you still cut like it probably take you about 10 minutes to do one bonnet so you are able to knock these things out in a day like an hour you can knock out probably like 30 to 40 if you do that you probably have pre-cut <laughs> but it's also why you charge your price because you are cutting this fabric by hand you are piecing it together you're sewing it you're doing elastic pulling and you are top stitching it after that you make sure everything looks good at the end just don't get somebody something that look crazy okay and this is a double layer satin and bonnet is reversible so if you do not know satin and bonnets are very good for your hair one thing that a lot of people don't know and this is a tip because this is if you're going to be selling this make sure you also believe in your products i'm telling y'all tips but make sure at the same time you believe in your products so if you do not know satin and bonnets are amazing for your hair it's not even just for curly hair and you know don't come at me in the comments it's not just for black people i make satin and bonnets for everybody boy girl white black hispanic whatever i make it for everybody that's why my business is the business that it is and it's so unique because it's not made for one person it's unique just for you you pick your style you pick your design you pick your colors that sometimes not everybody gonna have you picking colors was like oh gosh like i didn't even think about pairing this color with that color i thought purple and yellow would look crazy but this is that would make to this business so amazing like i meet people with unique designs and creations that i get to bring it to life it's so freaking cool but satin bonnets actually protect your face not just your hair so if you do not know if you sleep on cotton bonnets right when you have lint or like you know dandruff in your hair and I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys i have dandruff i have been natural my whole life and i always have problem with dandruff and i suffer from dandruff because my hair just gets so dry and i always have dandruff right when i sleep on my pillow i'm leaving all that dirt and that moisture and just nastiness on my pillow and guess what it's also going on my face and I'm breaking out since I have started wearing my satin bonnets and I wear them a lot as you guys can see now I feel like I have less acne I have less bumps because guess what with the satin bonnet it's not rubbing off of my cotton pillow to rub on my face you get what I'm saying it's not on there that's why I think I'm gonna make satin pillowcases but it's not rubbing off on there so that means I'm not breaking out the satin bonnet is keeping the moisture in your hair so your hair won't be dry so wet your hair at night put the bonnet on definitely if you get a cotton and satin bonnet honey that moisture and that wetness is going to be on your head. So now we're going to overlap our elastic band. And when I say overlap, overlap, okay? We're going to overlap it. We already have it on zigzag and we're just going to zigzag. I do a couple of them. All I do is just do some back stitches a couple times just to make sure it's secure. Basically back stitch the whole entire time. And on top of just keeping your face like you know without acne and protecting against pumps and all of the nastiness that you get on your pillow from your hair because you do put a lot of chemicals in your hair your hair is less tangled it keeps your hair laid down from all the designs that you do you know what i'm saying like sometimes you get these braids and you don't lay down them edges it's helping lay down them edges it's keeping it definitely the same it's not changing anything about it it's going to keep it the same way. I'm cutting off the extra um, thread. I love to test it by doing like this. Y'all, my um, There we go. There we go. I will pull. This ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so as you see, I did do a couple zigzags. A lot of them. And I'm going to pull it on through here. Move it around. Move it back. Move it. Boom, boom, boom. This part is very tricky for a lot of people is hard but we gonna i'm gonna show you what i do to make sure it is closed okay so this part is the opening and remember i told you leave extra fabric do not cut the opening part i'm gonna tell you guys why you're gonna use that to flip it inside and that way it all blends in and it's not like something sticking out you're flipping the extra fabric inside so that way you are able to get like almost a seam like the rest of it see 
it looked like a seam. Look at that. Nice. Sometimes it may come loose, so that's when I grab like a extra little pin. Hold it. Oh, sorry, you guys. That just knocked against me. And boom. It almost looked just like a stitch already. Go ahead and let's get sewing machine. Now, y'all finna be right on the edge, okay? You finna be right on the edge of that needle. You gonna be right on the edge. All right, we clipped it. I'm gonna start exactly where the opening was. We want the opening to not open, okay? We already got it on the edge and everything like that. And try not to hit the elastic band. If I feel the elastic band is in there, and I do feel the elastic band is in that one, I'm gonna go ahead and just like move it over. I just want to be on the edge of it. So that part I see I'm not on the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over a little bit more. I wanna be right on this edge. Oh, y'all, we still got the zigzag stitch on. Don't do like me and have the zigzag stitch on, okay, y'all? All right, boom. Take the pin out. And just sew that edge, okay? Do not sew the elastic, sew the edges only. Sew the elastic, then it cannot actually stretch out like you want. You gotta go slow, then go slow. Back stitch. Boom. Take it out. If you look at it, you missed something, just go back and sew that part. Okay, I see that part shifted a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just sew that part. It's literally just one little piece that shifted. And I'm sewing that part, but I'm actually lining it up with the other thread so it won't look like I went back in and sewed it. You get what I'm saying? All right, clean it up. Make sure that part is closed, Not, nothing is open. And you actually can wash these satin bonnets also. Like I tell people, you can wash these satin bonnets. Just make sure who you get your satin from. You can wash it. And guess what? We are done. We are done. We are done. You got like a little ruffle up there too. <laughs> Alright. We are done. Boom. We're done. Look at that. Adult large. Got the space. But yet it's not going to be loose around your head. And this also that test. Nothing's breaking. We are good. And that is how you make a double layer satin bonnet adult large. Okay, not so pretty. I love this color. We are done. This is the adult large satin bonnet. Now, when I show y'all the face of my mannequin, don't laugh, okay? Because my kids drew on my mannequin. When you have kids, that's just the process. Now, this is the mannequin right here. Don't worry about the pin marks. Like I said, my kids was just writing on it like this. Supposed to be a doll head for them. Y'all see it? Like, hmm, they say have kids. Look what them kids did to my stuff. But I'm not going to go throw this away. This thing like $7. But this is the bunny right here. It is a beauty. We did a adult large so you can see the space that it has on the side. For that way, if you have more hair than me, where well, you got the long hair and you got them bundles in your head. And yeah, you got to don't have the bundles going to your booty. You got the bundles going to your booties, baby. You need an adult XL. But if you got the long hair, then this is the bunny for you. Do you see it? It got the inches on there for your inches. <laughs> hey, but this is the dough large. This is what we sold today together. Look how it came out. It is so pretty. I love this color. When it comes down to doing satin, I always love satin just because of the look, just because that shininess, the feel. So soft. It's just so beautiful. But this blue on blue is blueing, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> it's blue and baby oh my gosh i'm so corny with my jokes but i do hope you guys enjoyed today's video so make sure you guys like comment subscribe check out the website if you are interested in a custom bunny and you look like i don't want to sew it myself i want something made then check out the website but i do hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i'll see you guys next time bye